We have a major update on Mitchell Robinson and his return for the New York Knicks. According to multiple NBA insiders, Robinson returned to practice and went through full practice for the New York Knicks. We're going to break down what this means for the Knicks, when could Robinson return, and what he did during practice today. All of this and so much more today. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button now and make sure you have notifications turned on so you don't miss a second of the new content. And now, let's get started. Mitchell Robinson goes through full practice with contact. There's the key there, folks, with contact. Unlike Julius Randle, who has not yet moved into full contact yet, Mitchell Robinson, the next step for him in recovery was going to full contact, and he just made that step today, and I'm so happy to see it. Let's break down exactly how Mitchell Robinson looked during his first time back during a full practice with contact. As you can see, two great NBA insiders and Steph Bondi and Fred Katz both reported that Mitchell Robinson went through practice today and Bondi noted that it's a big update because again, it's with contact. And according to Steve Popper, when he was speaking to Tom Thibodeau about Mitchell Robinson, he said the following about Mitch during practice. Mitch was good. He practiced today. He's got to go through contact for a while. So then he's got to get cleared by the doctor. It wasn't extended, obviously, but he did shooting. He did shooting offense, defense, script. Good day. And like we mentioned at the top of the show, Popper noted in his article that Mitchell Robinson rejoined the team today for a full practice session for the first time since shutting down on December 8th in Boston and undergoing that left ankle surgery shortly after that. Amazing updates from all of these great NBA insiders. Mitchell Robinson has just gone through a full practice, folks. He has been taking contact. Now, as Tom Thibodeau stated, he's going to have to do this for a while, and then he's going to have to get cleared by the doctors. But once he gets cleared, he is back for the New York Knicks. And this was the next step for Robinson. So the fact that he's achieved it and he's moved on to this next step is great news for the New York Knicks. That means he's coming back very soon, likely before April. And if he comes back before then, that means he's going to have at least seven to eight games left for the New York Knicks where he can gain chemistry, gel with this roster, gel with this unit, find out what his role is going to be with this new Knicks team, with Isaiah Hartenstein maybe starting, maybe coming off the bench. That's the one thing that I wanted to know from Tom Thibodeau after Mitchell Robinson went through the practice. Given Mitchell Robinson, his skill set, and everything he means to this Knicks team, I oftentimes wonder, when he gets healthy and he comes back for the New York Knicks, who's going to start? Is it going to be iHeart or is it going to be Mitchell Robinson? Well, thanks to Steve Popper, he spoke to Tom Thibodeau earlier today after practice regarding Isaiah Hartenstein, Mitchell Robinson, and who would likely start once Robinson returns. And this is what he had to say about it. Thibodeau did not commit to a lineup, but did seem to be leaning to bringing Robinson off the bench at least to start. When we get there, we'll make that decision. But he's not going to play extended minutes when he comes back. He's going to build up to that. Both guys have gone back and forth. And I didn't see what he wrote or said on Instagram, anything like that. But when a guy comes back off an extended injury or time where he's been out, I think it takes a little bit of time to get more of that timing back. It probably makes more sense with shorter minutes to do it in that way. We'll see how it unfolds. Shout out to Steve Popper for asking the question that was number one on my list. This was what I wanted to know. Once Robinson is fully healthy and he returns for the New York Knicks, is he going to come off the bench? Is he going to start? What's going to happen? Well, Tom Thibodeau, in classic Tom Thibodeau fashion, didn't really answer the question but did say it does make sense for him to play shorter minutes and not extended minutes once he comes back. And what's the best way he can do that? Likely coming off the bench. And if Mitchell Robinson starts coming off of the bench once he returns, I'm not going to have any issue with that. And it's going to make sense. You'll likely do that with any player coming back from injury. You don't want to just throw them back into the fire and see what they can do with 40 plus minutes. You want to make sure you work them back the right way and increase their minutes slowly, especially with a guy like Robinson, who's coming back from an ankle injury with that type of injury and Mitchell Robinson being your big man, one of your primary big men in this league to get rebounds, get blocks, get put back dunks. You want to make sure that ankle is 100% fully healthy. 
So once that's the case, it makes sense to potentially make Robinson come off the bench once he returns. So that way he can get the wind back underneath him. He can get the cardio back. He can make sure his minutes slowly increase. And then once he can play extended minutes, in my opinion, Tom Thibodeau and the coaching staff should do it based off of matchup. iHeart has already proven he can start as a starting center in this league. Mitchell Robinson is great on defense, and he can show you under the right head coach, he can start in this league. You have two quality starting centers on your roster. The best thing you can do at this point in time is to start either one of them based on the matchup you're going up against on that night. If it's a team like Cleveland, I'm starting Mitchell Robinson. If it's a team like the 76ers, maybe, I'm going to start Isaiah Hartenstein. Mitchell Robinson starting and iHeart coming off the bench or Robinson off the bench and iHeart starting. Either way, that's a deadly combination and a deadly duo to have. Robinson would eat bench players alive if they try to go against them in the paint. And Isaiah Hartenstein has already showed you he can do it against these starting caliber centers. And not only that, he has an offensive touch. You can't leave him alone. He can pass the ball very well. He can do what he needs to do on the defensive end as well, too. Not in the same way that Mitchell Robinson can, but he can still hold his own. One of the biggest factors, one of the biggest reasons why the New York Knicks are fourth in the Eastern Conference right now and creeping on that third seed with the Cleveland Cavaliers. And you never know, the Knicks might just get it. But we have to give credit to iHeart and understand why Tom Thibodeau might decide to start iHeart for the rest of the season and into the postseason and have Mitchell Robinson come off the bench. We can't hate on it if that's the decision. We also can't hate on it if Mitchell Robinson is the one starting eventually and iHeart comes off the bench. Because either way, that duo together is going to play a lot of minutes and they are going to terrorize the opposing teams. And I think that should be the focus. Shout out to NBA insider Steph Bondi for the New York Post for reporting the following. When he was asking about Robinson, his conditioning, and where he is right now in his recovery. And Tom Thibodeau had the following to say about Mitchell Robinson. You are always concerned when you can't do a lot of cardio. He did all he could. He was in the pool all the time. You're always concerned about a big gaining weight because of the lack of cardio but he did a good job of monitoring his weight. So that's a big plus. And now, once he's cleared, just keep building. We'll keep adding each day. See how he feels the next day. You never know until tomorrow how he feels. So that's a big part of this. But if you were wondering how Mitchell Robinson looked in his first full practice back, all you have to do is ask Jalen Brunson. And that's exactly what Steve Popper did. And according to Brunson, When asked about Robinson and how he looked during practice today, he said he looked like Mitch. And Brunson mentioned the following regarding Mitchell Robinson and what he helps bring to this team. Toughness, obviously rebounding, finishing around the rim, blocking the rim, protecting the rim. There are things he's been great at his whole career. And so he brings that to the table and just gives us another element. That was one of my other questions I had. One of my other main questions. After practice, how did Mitchell Robinson look? Did he look the same? Did he look different? Was he favoring the ankle? Well, according to Brunson, he looked like Mitch. That's all I need to hear. If he looked like Mitch today in his first practice back, then that means each and every day for the next week or two, he is going to continue to look like that dominant center that we had before he went down with that ankle injury. And that's something to look forward to. If Mitchell Robinson looks like his old self now, I can only imagine what he looks like in a few days. Who knows what's going to happen? Like Tom Thibodeau said, you never know what's going to happen tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow and he wakes up and he says, you know what? I feel good. I feel great. I feel amazing. And maybe that speeds up his return timeline and he returns very, very soon. Or maybe that's not the case. Either way, I can't wait to see Robinson come back on the floor for this Knicks team and do what he was always doing being a defensive force for this Knicks team, not only on the boards, but also blocking shots and helping getting those put back dunks. Because I remember all of those things Mitchell Robinson did for this Knicks team. I didn't forget. Julius Randle, on the other hand, still hasn't moved on to that full contact yet. That's his next step. It's been his next step for the last few weeks now, and we're still waiting for him to move on to that. I am still very concerned, and I'm going to remain concerned until Randle moves on to that step. We don't know anything about his status as of yet. We're going to continue to wait. Hopefully, over these next few days, we'll get another update about Randall and where he is in recovery. Hopefully, that next update is the fact that Randall joins Mitchell Robinson and the fact that now he is taking full contact because that would put a huge smile on my face. 
This Knicks team, when healthy, is not only dominant, they are lethal. They are a team you do not want to face in a seven-game series. But best believe, somebody's going to face us come the playoffs. And I feel sorry for that team if the Knicks are fully healthy because we are running through you. No matter who you are, we are running through you. A fully healthy Knicks team, you're not stopping us. I remember January, and we didn't even have Mitchell Robinson. Imagine what it looks like now with Mitchell Robinson coming back. It is going to be exceptional, amazing. I can't wait for this Knicks team to finally be fully healthy and whole once again. Only a couple more weeks before that becomes a reality. But what about you guys? What do you think about Mitchell Robinson finally going through his first full practice for the first time since December 8th? Let me know in the comments below, guys, because honestly, I would love to hear from you. But that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead and smash that like button. Leave a comment below. And of course, guys, please subscribe to the channel. Until next time, Nick fans. Peace.